Welcome to the Hassle of Psychworks. I'm Robert. Have you guys seen the surface conditioning tools? Um, the most popular one right now is by Eastwood. It's called the Contour. Well, today we're going to attempt to make our own. It could be absolutely brilliant or it could be a train wreck. So before we get into it, a little bit of backstory. We're going to be talking about the Eastwood Contour SCT in this video, mostly because it's the most popular right now. You see it everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, and we're not throwing shade at that tool at all. Actually, it's pretty sweet, and I was very close to buying one. But I'll tell you why I didn't. I'm going to throw some screenshots up for you, but the tool itself is just shy of 200 bucks now the whole reason i started looking at one was i was getting ready to start prepping the metal pieces for jake's drift trike build which almost all of it is plate steel got a little bit of rust on it nothing too bad a little bit of scale but we we're going to take this so it needs to be super clean bright shiny metal ready to go you, know, you generally go after it with what an angle grinder with a flap disc which will work don't get me wrong it will work but the number of pieces for this build and the amount of time it would take me to do that with an angle grinder and flap disc is too long for me um, so I was on the lookout for a better solution and I came across the Contour SCT from Eastwood. Now there are other manufacturers of these. Uh, Jegs has one that looks identical to the Eastwood. The price is almost exactly the same. Uh, Walther has some. Matabo has one. The prices go from 200, just shy of 200 bucks on up, uh, just for the tool. Now the Eastwood one, I was almost sold on that. I was had it in the cart, ready to go. What got me was, and I'll put a screenshot up, the price for the rollers or the drums, whatever you want to call them, 60 bucks a pop. Seriously? So that, that was the deal breaker for me. The, the price of the tool was a little high, but I could kind of justify that with the amount of work I could do and what I could use it for. I decided that I would give it a go and try to make my own version. Uh, should be pretty simple this is completely untested i haven't tried it yet everything's still in the box so if it blows up in my face you guys are going to see it i was able to score an actual legit eastwood drum this is the 120 grit version for some reason this one on the website was only 20 something bucks where the rest are like 59. so i jumped on that got the actual disc Now the problem became, how do I drive this thing? Well, after looking at the Eastwood and the few others out there, it really looked just like an angle grinder that had a longer nose on it. Um, so of course, Harbor Freight, four and a half inch angle grinder, 1999, picked that up. Then after some research, I found out that the I don't think it says it on the box, but the maximum RPM for these drums is 3,800, which is pretty low, especially when the free spinning speed of this angle grinder is 11,000. So that's why the nose on the Eastwood and the other products is so much longer. When I'm saying the nose, I'm talking this section here. It's a lot longer on the Eastwood. They actually have a gear reduction in there so they can mechanically drop it down from the high RPM of the motor down to what the drum can handle. So how to come up with a way to mediate that issue. Harbor Freight to the rescue again. This is one of the router speed controls. Um, 
our angle grinder is way below the maximum amperage and this should give us enough control that we can crank it down to roughly where it needs to be without over speeding this drum and it flying apart and hurting someone. So we've got the drive, we got the drum, and we've got the speed control. How do we attach this drum to the angle grinder? A couple minutes on Google. And I came across, it's actually a kit. Um, kind of hard to find, but it comes from Camel Grinding Wheels. Weird name, definitely gonna put a link down in the description. Uh, their prices are pretty good. Um, so what we start out with is the 5 8 by 5 8 11 hex adapter, which will bolt directly onto the 5 8 11 threaded section on the drive of this angle grinder. From there, we use this quarter 20, it's a three inch long screw, or bolt rather, with a head on it. And that will actually grab and cinch this down. And just for good measure, part of the kit was a 5 16 Allen wrench. Use that to cinch everything down. The only thing that we're actually going to have to build for this is a new guard because instead of protecting you from a disc, we're now protect, having to protect ourselves from a drum. And this thing is a lot bigger than it looked online, let me tell you, from this guy. So we need, the guard that comes on the angle grinder would probably only cover about this. So we're gonna have to fab our own guard. And we're also gonna wanna move the handle to give us a little better leverage. Now, so far, I've got maybe $75. Right, so we're going to plug this in. Definitely make sure it's off. So our speed control is on. Seems good.
get for less than $75 for the parts a little bit of scrap metal some time and some out-of-the-box thinking well So it looks really good, but does it work? Let's find out. Well, that definitely works. While it took the surface rust off, no problem. Um, the scale was a little harder to get through, so I'd probably get a more coarse drum if you're gonna be doing this type of work. But other than that, and if I would have worked this with an angle grinder, I would not be able to put my hand on it. It's warm but it is not hot. If you've got a little bit of time, a little bit of scrap metal, and less than 75 bucks in your pocket, you can build your own version of the Eastwood Contour SCT for a fraction of the price. So no reason why you guys can't do it and save yourself a buttload of money. Uh, until next time, guys, get up, get out there, and do it.